Hey, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you're new today. I'm going to be talking about another topic in my Earth Month series. So, plastic bottles, I know where you know I'm going to head with this, but plastic bottles are the ultimate convenience. They are easy to get. You can get them in any store. Um, they, you can drink from them, throw them in your bag. They're perfect size. They seal up themselves. They're not going to leak. Um, you can put them in your your purse, your backpack, whatever. Backpacks even have a little dedicated pocket specifically to fit plastic bottles and also some people can even fit them in their pockets and plastic bottles are so convenient that humans globally purchase and use 1 million plastic bottles per minute not per year not even per month not per week per minute and 91% of those are not recycled. Plastic bottles take approximately 400 years to decompose, which doesn't seem like that big of a deal if you think about it. It's like, okay, this thing is gonna, it's gonna decompose eventually, right? Because it's not like 400 years, it's not never, it's just 400 years. So that's not exactly the way it's happening. So despite the best efforts of some environmental advocates, people are still consuming plastic bottles, not even just water bottles, just like pop bottles and like bottled tea and stuff like that, Gatorade, all, you know, everything that comes in a plastic bottle basically. Um, they, people are just using them more and more and more because they're so convenient. So those 910,000 bottles every minute have to go somewhere. So, and those two, somewhere is it, one of two places usually, either in a landfill or in the ocean. So in landfills, they are of course just piling and piling up, um, and yes, eventually they will decompose. However, plastic wasn't even invented 400 years ago. So that means that every piece of plastic that has ever been produced, it still exists on the earth today that even if it has been recycled, it's still transformed into some other type of plastic or some other use, like a recycled bottle might be like those pins that, that they've made from recycled bottles or something like that, it still exists. And of course we are using plastic infinitely faster than it's decomposing. In the ocean, plastic is going to float around until either ends up in the belly of a fish or it washes back up on the, on the ocean somewhere, on the beach somewhere. And the reason why that's such a problem is that, it, that, that all the plastic eventually does end up in fish or like I said, back on the land in the first place. It doesn't just sit there in the ocean and chill all fine and dandy. But um, so the reason why that is a problem for fish is it, I think, well, why don't fish just not eat the plastic? They know it's not food. Well, if you've ever seen a fish swim around, most, the typical, when the, the kind of fish that you think of when you think of like the word fish, you know, like the, with the gills and big mouth and stuff, and maybe not like sharks and stuff, they might, I don't know. But where I'm getting at is that the way that fish swim around, they have to swim with their mouth open to let the water pass through their gills. If they had their mouth closed, they wouldn't be able to get any oxygen from the water. So when they do that, they like whatever's in front of them just goes in their mouth. And if it's plastic, it's they end up eating the plastic. If it's another like a smaller fish or something, then they end up eating that. So it's just it's unavoidable to them. They can't just step over it like we can if it's laying on the ground. And this ends up in the fish that you eat. Um, and it, as the recent study actually showed that if you eat fish on a regular basis, you end up ingesting 11,000 tiny particles of plastic per year. This is another reason why I am happily vegan. So one very small step that you can take to help this is to, of course, stop using plastic bottles, bring your own. So they are extremely unnecessary in parts of the world where clean water is accessible. However, there are places even in the United States and of course abroad in, in lesser developed countries that do need bottled water to be able to get any kind of clean drinking water, which is a problem in itself, but for the rest of us who can avoid it, then we should. And by and large, if you are watching this video on the internet, on your cell phone or computer, this probably includes you. So if you have a reusable water bottle, most public places have a water fountain that you can use or even self-serve or like fast food restaurants where you get your own drink. They're usually pretty cool with you filling up your own bottle for water. And if you're one of those bougie people who just has to have that bottled water because you hate the taste 
of any lesser brand of bottled water or even, God forbid, the tap water. I, I don't have any sympathy for you because I grew up drinking well water. So there are many kinds of refillable, reusable water bottles. There are many different, there's like plastic and glass and metal. Um, probably, I think they have bamboo ones now and any of them will work of course, but you want to make sure that you get one that's going to last the longest because then if it doesn't last very long, it just ends up the same fate as the the disposable bottles. So I suggest a metal one. So this one is from the company Myra. I'm not, not sponsored or anything. It's just the one I have and it's from Amazon and they have like different sizes, different colors. I do suggest a metal one with an enclosed drinking spout. So they have those bottles with like the flip top with the straw. If you need a straw to be able to drink, that's fine. But I would suggest if you can to get one with an enclosed mouthpiece. It just germs like they're floating around in the air. Um, no matter how hard you try to sanitize it, it just the, if your the mouthpiece of your bottle is open to the air all the time, you're accidentally touching it when you're trying to grab the the handle or something. So just enclosed mouthpiece. This one just screws off and and you drink out of this part that's underneath of the cap. And this one is quite large. I think it's either 32 or 40 ounces. It doesn't say. No, it doesn't. But they do have a little bit smaller ones. This one is quite heavy when it's full, but again, it lasts you for like one fill up of this lasts me all day. Um, or the reason why I don't suggest plastic ones is because they break really easily. I've I used to only use plastic ones because they were lightweight, easy to carry around, and I every every single one I've ever had, I've dropped and broken it. So um, it's just it's more wasteful to buy one that's not going to last because, like I said, it does end up in the same place as the ones you're trying to replace. So I will leave a link in the description to where I got these on Amazon. And then there's also uh, reusable coffee cups, stuff like that. I do have a coffee cup that I forgot to bring over with me. I'll put a picture over here, but it's from, I can't remember the name, Zoji Rushi. Yeah, I'll put that here too, Z-O-J-I-R-U-S-H-I. And it is like way better than a, um, those, I don't want to mention many name brands here, but better than those one insulated beverage cups that everybody thinks is like the best and they're really expensive. Um, and I've even tried like the Walmart brand of those kind of cups and they just don't compare because the the one here is completely sealed. Like the top of it closes, it's vacuum sealed and you can even lock it to keep it from opening in your purse or something. And it holds in the hot coffee or cold drink, whatever you have, pretty well. Actually, it's too, too well because if I don't put ice cubes in my coffee, it's too hot to drink for like six hours. And then again, some places will fill up your reusable coffee cup. If not, just bring it from home because it's a lot cheaper anyways. Instead of, you can buy a whole th like thing of coffee for like $5 versus $5 for just a single drink at, at a coffee place. That's it for this video. Let me know what you think if you have any suggestions for any other earth earth friendly and related things and I will see you for the next two episodes. There's only two left and until then um, subscribe so don't miss any future videos and I will see you in the next one. Bye.